Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today we'll show you how to get stunning night colors and deal with a problematic photo. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. So I chose a photo from Unsplash that is not so great, but that's good because we often have problematic photos that don't look so good. This even has a lot of um, noise in here. I'm not gonna fix the noise. This is just about the colors in that video, but we're starting out with a bad start and we try to make the best of that. So how can we improve the colors? First of all, we wanna look at the photo. What is offending here? I would say the picture is too bright. The lights don't look good because they don't, they can't really unfold their real expressiveness and colorfulness and joy. So I would tackle that, make it darker, make the colors more pop, bring in a bit more contrast and then adjust the colors so the colors actually look nice because that is another problem here. The colors don't look nice, they don't feel nice. Okay, so first of all, Let's adjust here the brightness. Let's go to curves. That's always a good way to do that because of course we also have the histogram here and it's very intuitive because you can just grab that curve and then move it up and down to see what is happening. So experiment with that. And here is also a little bit of secret sauce, a little trick here to figure out which is what on that line here. You can use the color picker down here, click on that so it has a blue line around it basically and then you click somewhere in a photo and move that up and down. You can see, okay, there is a point created. So this is where that blue in the background is living basically on that line. Then for example, we could go over here and move that again and you can see, okay, this is over here. So that's also interesting to know that. And then we have some dark values down here. Okay, so they are living down here on our curve. So that's interesting to know. You don't have to adjust it like that. You can adjust it like that if you want to, but I find it a little bit problematic because you don't really know where the next point is going to be appearing on your curve. So I do that just to get an idea where things are on my curve and then I'm resetting that and then I'm doing it by my eye and with my hand just manually so I get the picture that I want. So you can see here, for example, I can push this over here because we know that the background, the sky is living up here in our curve. We can adjust that in a nice way and you can see over here to bring that down maybe a little bit to give us more of a night feel. Bring on these dark colors more to the middle like so. And that already, as you can see, starts to look a lot nicer than before. Maybe we can also bring down here the bright values. Let's experiment with that. Well, let's bring it down a tiny bit. All right, so that already looks a lot better. I'm much happier with that, but still, the lights are not that expressive and the colors don't mix that well. So let's go on and adjust this a little bit. So before we touch the colors, I want to also adjust the contrast. The reason for that is because these curve adjustments and also the contrast adjustments, they have an impact on some of the adjustments we do afterwards with the colors. So I want to do that quickly too. Let's go here to adjustments and go to brightness and contrast. And then again, go with our eye play around here. You can see when I bring in some more contrast, the picture gets a little bit clearer, a little bit cleaner. So that looks pretty nice. I see some more details in there. So that's pretty good. You could also, if you want to play a little bit with the brightness, let's bring that down like so. And that's okay. Actually, we didn't change that. Maybe let's do it a little bit. There we go, minus 2%, looks good. Okay, let's go on and pop up the colors by introducing our vibrance adjustment like this. So again, with the eye you can see, oh, now we get this nice red here that really gets pronounced now and you can really feel it um, rising up on the building, you know, so always Think about what is the kind of expression you want to have, what kind of the feeling you want people to have when they look at the picture and try to match that with your settings. Let's see, actually we can bring the vibrance a little bit down. 
saturation a little bit up. So that already looks pretty good. So that already looks pretty good. Now let's tune the colors a little bit so they feel better. Because right now I still feel like the, the colors are already there from how bright they are and how loud they are, but not from how they feel from the actual hue of the colors, right? So again, let's go here to an adjustment. And for this first, I'm going to use color balance. Um, the benefit of that is, first of all, it's very intuitive. You have these three sliders here, and then also it is split up in the tonal range. So you have here the midtones, the shadows, the highlights. I can play with that. And of course, in this photo, I do have a lot of these different areas. So that is pretty helpful for me. Okay, so again, we just move these sliders around, look at the picture, see what's happening, and even look at the slight changes. That's really important. Uh, don't just look for the big changes that are happening, also for the slight things. For example, uh, when you move this around, you can see that here in that red area, the light is changing a tiny bit on how it hits the building, how pronounced it is on the building. And of course, now you can decide, do you want to have all of these areas in that kind of pink? Or do I want to reduce it a little bit? So it's just here on the brighter areas, but the rest is kind of sinking back into that blue from, I guess this has been photographed in the blue hour, right? So this is basically a decision you have to make for yourself when you adjust the photo. Um, because it's, of course, an artistic decision. So there's no right or wrong answer. Also, by the way, I'm going to link this uh, photo from Unsplash under the video in the information, and then you can have a take on it and post it in my Facebook group to see what you have done. Please post it under the post of this tutorial. I will also link that in the Facebook group. So just comment with that photo. All right, let's go on here. Do some more adjustments. Let's go by the eye. You can see, for example, this is giving us a change in the blue of the background. You can see like this is a nice blue and this is kind of a greenish getting blue. So maybe a little bit more of this kind of nicer blue here. Then let's go over to the shadows here. Adjust that also. Let's see again. You can see here in the red areas. You can have a lot of red here, very shiny, very bright, or you can reduce it just to these brighter areas. So really decide on what you want to have here. Oh, this is also nice. You see the whole building here. The whole building here is changing to become either more violet or more of this a little bit greenish hue that kind of looks a little bit also uh, a little bit foggy. So maybe bring it a little bit over here because it feels like then we have some more detail in here. This also looks good. And here we could decide if, for example, in this case, we want to separate the building more from the background or combine it more with the background. Because you can see if I push this up, the building is getting more blue and then also the sky is blue. And if I push it more in this direction, the building is becoming more a little bit more kind of brown and it separates it more from the background. So we can really decide that here. I want to separate this a little bit more, to be honest. Let's go here for highlights and see if this has any impact. It does actually. So look up here at that area here where we have that light. And you can see if I push this over, this suddenly becomes a nice warm light that is actually separating more from the backgrounds. So if I move it over here, it's becoming a kind of bluish yellow. And when I move it over here, it is this kind of warm orange expression. So it's actually nicer because it gives me a better look at that. This is not so good as you can see. It's changing all of the background. I don't want to have that. And then here, wow, this is actually not too bad. Should we have such an expressive background? We could, or we could move it in the other direction. It's a little bit more muted, but then the colors of the building come out better. Um, let's bring it maybe down a little bit. Let's see, or up a little bit. Hmm. Let's see. Let's go like this, actually. It's, it's very popping. It's very loud, but that's okay. Um, it's eye catching. So that's also a good thing. It really depends also where you want to use that picture. For example, for Instagram, maybe or for Facebook, you want to have something more eye popping. If you want to have maybe a photo book or something else, you want to maybe have it a little bit more quiet. 
Um, so it's not too much competing with the other stuff you have in that photo book. While, of course, on Instagram, you want to have more competition. All right, uh, so let's go here for the channel mixer, which is also nice. And here you can see we have the red, green, and blue channel. And with that, we can also do some nice adjustments, which you can see here. For example, we can push up the red values. Don't go over the top because then the colors are clipping. You can see that it starts to look very washed out. So be a little bit careful with what you're doing here, but we can push it up a little bit if we want to. Let's also look at the other values here. We can push this up a little bit. And you can see when I push this up, the whole building gets more of this kind of pinkish hue. So maybe that is not too bad. Let's push this up a little bit here. Let's go for the green. Mm, no, this is a little bit, if you, if you do it like that, you could, but I feel like it's a little bit too much Disney in here. Oh, wow, that's very Disney. Okay, so let's see I think everything in here is going to be a little bit too extreme so let's skip that green channel let's go to the blue channel and let's see wow you see this is kind of this very pop pink could also be cool if you don't want to have realistic colors but you want to have more artistic colors that you enjoy personally you could do that it doesn't have to look like it actually looked at the spot um, or as you can see here when you push this over it becomes kind of a sinister orange red um, looking very different uh, so you can really play around with that i will reduce this a little bit so it gets a little bit more of that orange here kind of like that um, this i will keep the same let's look at the blue and i think i might also keep maybe push this down a little bit although it does make the background a little bit green so just a tiny hint there we go Okay, and so if you look at that picture, it's already a lot better than what we had at the start. Look at this. This is our starting picture. This is our final picture. And I would say we made from a picture that is not so great and not something to write home about into something that's actually looking pretty interesting and cool and you could share on social media. Thank you very much for watching. See you in my next tutorial. Leave a like if you enjoyed that and maybe follow, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my tutorials for Affinity Photo and also other photo editing programs. See you soon. Bye.